On a fine late spring morning, many travel to the town of Collingwood on the shores of Georgian Bay to witness a short but spectacular event, the launching of a ship. Launching of a steel hull more than 700 feet long and weighing thousands of tons is quite an undertaking, in this case complicated by the fact that there is very little room in the narrow launch basin. Huge portable curved reflectors are used to protect the buildings from the enormous force of the displaced water when the ship enters the basin. Some early arrivals have already staked out the best viewing positions hours before the event takes place. Prior to the launching day, Huge timber slipways, on a slant, have been inserted between the building blocks, and since early this morning, a gang of workmen have been working to transfer the weight of the ship from the erection supports to the slipways. The top of the slipway timber is greased before the sleigh is placed on top of it. The triangular space between the sleigh and the ship is packed with wood. A horizontal row of wedges is placed between the wood timber packing. All morning, a group of workmen with sledgehammers has moved from the back to the front of the ship, hammering these wedges home in rallies. This, in effect, raises the ship a fraction of an inch so that the erection supports can be removed and the ship's weight transferred to the slipways. The gangplank has been removed, therefore the deck crew has to be hoisted aboard. The huge chains fastened to the side of the ship are to prevent the hull from hitting the other side of the narrow basin. They are connected to drag boxes, large containers filled with pig iron, which can slide up to 14 feet. A chain connected to a fixed point would break. The event is very popular with school children, who show up en masse under their teacher's supervision. The axemen are patiently waiting near their triggers, devices which prevent the ship from sliding down the slipways prematurely, and which will be cut simultaneously to launch the ship.
This is my last launch. If there's a lot of time, I'll cut the ropes. I'll be finished in July. July the 23rd. Why did it take off? The rope lashing over the cutting block is connected to a steel cable which leads in turn to a sturdy steel cantilevered beam supporting a hefty wood timber pushing against a steel bracket welded to the ship's bottom. When the rope is cut, the steel lever falls away, as does the timber, so the hull is free to slide. The red painted piece of lumber is a simple indicator of the early slight movements of the ship when its weight transfers to the triggers. It is constantly monitored by the telltale men at the bow, who by walkie-talkie are in constant touch with similar observers at the stern of the ship. A series of simple hand pumps connected to strategically located hydraulical cylinders are ready to be applied if the ship should stick after the triggers are cut. These steel straps, called dogs, are an additional safety device to prevent a premature launch. When they are disengaged by hammering the wedges to remove the staples, it signals that the axes are ready to fall and that the launch is imminent. Another successful launch is over, and the crowd who has patiently waited for hours to see a few seconds of spectacular action is going home. Most of them will be back the next time.